something was wrong in my marriage because of the many, many times I left and because of the many, many people I talked to and because of the many, many, many nights I cried and because of, the, uh, because of a lot of pain that I endured. I knew something was broken, but I couldn't put a finger on it. I wouldn't say, I would not be able to say this is what is broken. I knew something was like really wrong, but I, I didn't know. I mean, at, until that point... So, um, we went to the, uh, we went to the reception, we went to the photo session, then we went to the reception and at the reception, we were taking pictures and we took pictures, a lot of pictures with people from, um, his church, which was, which I consider like, um, it was kind of my church because that's where my mom was. And so like, I knew maybe maybe 30 percent of the people and i felt like i belonged there so i mean it, it was it was like really um really good so we took a lot of pictures with everybody it was i mean it had a lot of people but because i wasn't i was from a different church so it, it I, I think my um people from my church were seated like um together and um once we, they they thought that we were done with uh, taking pictures with a lot of other people they started coming towards us and when they came they, they were walking towards us i was so excited i saw them and i was like hey my, i mean like my people are coming like uh, my, my my youth team is coming my and you know what my partner did he let go of my hand and i said i mean why are you letting go and he said i'm tired i'm not gonna take pictures anymore and I said, hey, I mean, we've taken pictures. They're coming. They're here. They're almost here. Let's take this picture with them. And I can't even show anybody what I mean that I'm getting agitated. I'm like, please don't go. And he said, I said, I'm tired. And he just like let go. And I watched him walk. Oh, oof. I watched him walk and he went and sat. And I took these last pictures alone with my friends. You know, I didn't, I haven't cried. Like, I didn't think these things would make me feel like this. I thought I've dealt with them, like, extensively. So he sat down and he didn't take pictures with, with my people. So when we went back, I asked, like, Hey, why did you do that? Like, he didn't answer me. And now that was my life from then to the end of this relationship. I could not ask anything. I could not say anything. So we go to the, we go to, um, to honeymoon. I'm not going to go into the details of all that. I mean, uh, unless you are here for, for forever. So we, um, uh, we go for honeymoon and um we didn't have money we didn't have money for honeymoon i mean long story short i had a relative i had my mom's sister who was in um in the coast and we agreed oh let's go and look for her we hadn't even she actually hadn't even known that i had wedded because um it was it it was like um the beginning of um mobile phones not for the affluent but for you know for the common uh, for the common monanchi so not everybody had had um phones before then so we had kind of lost touch she, she hadn't even come for my mom's funeral so we went and um and we, we met with her then and um we it was it was really good to see her after so long and she was so excited and we were like hey we want you to help us look for a for a nice place you know with this is how much you have and my aunt was like it's okay i mean you guys you i'm gonna check you in in uh, at this place that was yeah just just like like a very very basic place and i can i can be providing for you you know breakfast and um and meals then you guys and that is how it was so um this day this i think this third the third day we are in honeymoon and um after breakfast so my aunt goes to work and so I, we, we used to go out maybe to the beach and whatever else we used to do so this day he tells me i'm going to see my friend and I'm like, you're gonna go see your friend, and this friend that um, that he's going to see is a friend that um, 
did not like me didn't even think i was the ideal partner to my um <laughs> to my husband then <sighs> she it's actually the same lady that wanted to find out if i was a virgin so um so she 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 didn't like me she had made it clear she was um they were best friends but she didn't even show up for the wedding and um this guy went to see her during our honeymoon um this this lady had an ideal person for uh, for him she 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 thought that i wasn't the ideal person but that is a, a, a long story that i, I don't want to go into but yeah i mean um she she always thought that i wasn't the ideal but this guy chose that he was going to visit this lady during our honeymoon and you know what he communicated i don't respect my wife i don't value her i she is not a priority i don't care about her he communicated everything that um followed later because till the last till like i mean till um, a mother of three this lady was still uh, meeting people and and um she would tell them oh um this guy is a nice guy but um the wife the wife she he married is 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 a, is a really bad person like um <sighs> she did that till the last minute till the last minute and i'm just wondering like who is a, who is a, who is a good person or who is a bad person the person who leaves their newly wedded wife to go and see a friend to go and stay with a friend to go and spend a, a, a whole day or a whole afternoon with a friend is that even right is that even fair so the guy comes back when he comes back um i ask him like you left me the whole day i was just crying i'm in the room crying and he didn't say anything then i remember um when i pestered because i couldn't even sleep when i pestered he moved from you know the way you you, you know that we were sleeping on the same side he moved from that side and he he went to the to, to the other side and that was my life that was my life so coming back to um to nairobi i um oh god this thing is so hard to talk about i'm telling you it's not easy at all at all at all at all at all oh yeah so i mean i missed all these things so coming back to um to my to my nomadic life so um the first time i left home or the last the first time i left the marriage was maybe th- maybe three months into the marriage that's the first time i didn't sleep home and this was this was the reason um first when you came from honeymoon i i shredded after maybe two months after i shredded the marriage certificate because in honeymoon i got sick my eyes were so red i had an infection so i would tell him like i am in so much pain and he would tell me your pain is not more than my he, i think he also had like a, maybe a stomach ache because I, I remember he used to tell me your, your your pain is not more than my stomach ache and i suffered like all the time he refused to take me to a doctor uh it was almost towards us our coming back and when we went to um the the aunt's place i remember the aunt looked at me and she was like what is this like you guys go to the doctor right now and that's when we went to the doctor and i was given some eye drops so by the time we were coming back i had gone through so much and within that month i had gone through so much i had known that um he is emotionally like absent i had known that um he can never ever feel me like i was just like done and i would that time by that time i was so bold and so assertive before i was before i was boxed and before i was chiseled you know character development before i was character developed i was very very strong i mean i was stronger than than i'm i'm it's claimed i am today i was very assertive i was very strong i really knew what i wanted and what i did not want and what just one day i took this certificate and i was like there is no marriage it's done i'm done i'm gone ah <sighs> come back again to uh now the first time i left so 
my partner did not want me to go to my sister's place. My sister's place was the place I was raised, the place I was born, my mother's home. Um, that's where she started her life. So um, he had told me he doesn't want me to be going there, uh, especially uh, between like like the services because I used, he used to go to church. We used to go to the, we used to go to church together, and my church and my where I grew up. I mean, it's it's like it's like here and here. It's just outside. You you could actually sit at home and listen to the whole service. Someone you can sing with everybody else. So um, he had told me that he doesn't want me to be going there, and uh, he made it very clear. So um, he he gave me options. He told me you either go home or wait for me here at church but i don't want i don't want you to go there because i don't want to i don't want to be coming there to pick you and i said it's fine i can always come and check because i can i can hear when the service is over after the service because he because he would do both services so i said like after the, after both services are over i could come and um you don't have to come and so that that is what i used to do so i i kept going to and from from the gate like i would go and check have you are you done are you done are you done and um I used to find it like very unfair. I love using the word unfair. Like I mean you can you can very unreasonable. Like you can call me. You can call me when you're done and ask me, "Hey, let's go home." "Hey, I'm newly married." "Um I'm not I'm not a mother. I don't have a child. I don't have a TV at home, but I'm supposed to go at home." <laughs> so, um so this day before we came before we came to church on sunday i like really sweet talked to him i was like hey please allow me to go to be going to my sister and be comfortable then you can call me when you're done and i promise you i'll never make you delay even for a sec immediately just call me when you're walking out and i'll be out so i used to sit with my back like this i mean when i hear the the service is over i used to sit ready to to like to jump out so this day um service is over he hasn't called i've given him some, some some minutes i go to the i call he doesn't pick up i go to the gate i'm like hey is, is he here or he's left because the watch the watchman would know the watchman told me no no, no he's, he hasn't walked out so i go back to my sister's house and i'm standing at the you know at the window and i could i could see the exit uh to both uh like routes because um yeah there, there were two routes so i could see the exit to both so i said um so I, I, I was waiting then i saw him walk out and I called, I called him up from the window and he looked and I waved and I was like, hey, he just looked, he just, he was like, and he, and he continued walking. He was walking um, hand in hand with his brother, like literally hand in hand. So he walked, then I, I, I took the phone and called and um, I was like, hey, you forgot I was here. And he said, no. Then I was like, okay, maybe he's going to the shop or something. So I walked out, I went and I stood outside like where i could see the road like i was ready to join to join them then i they had like walked so far so i waited so i'm calling he's not picking up i'm like hey are you coming back that's what i was thinking like he didn't pick up but yeah then i texted i'm like hey you left me i mean where are you going he didn't respond then he responded after some few minutes or i mean i don't know how many minutes but um after a while he responded and he said he called and he said no, he texted, he said, we are home. And I said, what? You actually just left me here and you went home. And um, see, call me stubborn. It's fine. Like, I think I've, 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 I mean, I'm taking responsibility of my, you know, my, my, my part of um, my part of in all this. And I didn't go home as well. So I stayed there. So I'm trying to assert my boundaries because I've seen like, I mean, I've seen what you're trying to do to, you know, to 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 keep me in line, in the line that you want me to to be in. But I was like, uh, uh you have to come back for me. So I said, you're going to come back for me. Where exactly where you left me, you're going to come back for me. So um, he didn't come. That was Sunday. He didn't even text. He didn't call. I'm only three months into marriage. He didn't call. He didn't text. I didn't go okay my bad i should have gone right i should have humbled myself and like followed right i did not go i'm not important to you we had agreed you've refused so i didn't go 
um on monday i woke up he hasn't texted that time i am my heart is bleeding like really bleeding so i go to uh, i decide i can't stay at my sister's home and i'm, I'm not gonna go home call me hard-headed call me uh call me prideful fine i was right so i decide to go to um to the aunt's place so i go to the aunt's place and i tell the aunt this is what happened and i felt like it was um i don't know whether condescending is the right word like mother Rao, i don't know yeah i felt like it was it was like condescending behavior you know i just felt like you just did this willingly wantingly <laughs> you just did this intentionally it was very intentional so um i stayed there that day so monday he didn't call he didn't talk tuesday I told the auntie, please call him, tell him I'm here. So the aunt called and said, hey, what's happening? I mean, your, your wife is here. Like, what, 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 what happened? And he said he's not coming. He came on Wednesday, long and short of it. I mean, like, um, he had, like, now taught me that, like, I really don't care about you. And he came. And even when he came, he's not the one talking. I'm the one talking. I'm the one begging. And that was it. So I would not sleep at times. So sometimes I, w I would go to my friends. Um, I had two places I used to, to go to when I wanted to go sleep. You're with someone, you cannot sleep. They're giving you serious silent treatment. Like serious si silent treatment. They've done something wrong. They cannot own up. They cannot say sorry. They cannot. So you, and then there's no. You know, there's snow and you're there. So, like, sometimes I just used to go to my sister's place and sleep there for a night. I can't do two nights. And I can't do that because, I mean, she's married. And, I mean, it's the same place that I, I was living. I don't want people to see me. Sometimes I'd go to my, um, I call her sister friend, Kate. I'd go to my friend. And all that, all these times, it was something to do with, I remember one time it was, I was pregnant. And I, I, I saw this in my journal. And I said I wanted to eat liver. And he said, you're not going to eat liver today. I'll tell you when, to, when you're going to eat liver. And when I wrote, I, had, I, I couldn't even remember anything like that. When I read that, I was just like, oh my God. One time, I... Whew. Yeah. I'm not able to say that story. It's okay. I'm going to leave that story. Oh my God. This thing has drained me so bad. So bad. So bad. So it was the same thing. Like like, like that lack of, lack of empathy. So this time my cousin, my cousin um, calls and he says the brother has died. This is a son to my dad's brother. So my, da my dad was born too. So this is a son to his brother. So the brother calls and says, oh, my cousin has died. My, my brother has died. And I start crying. I'm in bed. I start crying. And my partner just leaves the bed. And well, I said again, he didn't know what to do with me when I was crying. And it's fine. But I had not understood that. So my bad. My bad is um, I had expectations. Even when they were not met, I still expected for them to be met. I had, um, I had, this, the, you know, this, this, the, I think there's what I thought, um, there's what I thought my marriage was, and I ex this, there's a way I expected to be treated that I was not treated, and um, probably I gave a lot of pressure. You know, probably I made it so difficult for someone to handle me. I have no, I mean, I am not saying I am a good person, but, um, yeah, but those are the things that made us, um, cause, 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 cause I was told like, I will never be, be you like sit away. If that's, I don't know whether that's the same, the same thing. So I really, really tried to man up, but it took me so long to man up. It took me so long to be uh, strong for myself and to be, to handle my issues the way I needed to handle them um yeah so by this time i had actually uh shredded my my marriage certificate i take full responsibility like i was i had gone through very many little things that were that's why i said i was writing a book called petty things am i mature then i realized like there's nothing we would talk about like we would not talk about about anything at all 
and i was very i was very firm i was very assertive like i want us to discuss maybe i wasn't uh i don't know maybe i didn't know how to maybe i didn't know how to um how to say how like w- let's talk about it but i remember i was chiseled enough to now start like begging can we talk can we talk can we talk can we resolve this can we talk about this can we talk about this can we have date nights can we have um time where we are talking about issues can we discuss something before it's done i mean like so by this time i had like it was it was like <sighs> so many things happening at the same time i honestly would say um the, the man that had pursued me was not the man that i now started seeing uh he became um like he became a macho man he became like a macho man and i i mean i got into the flow i i kind of started getting used to that and i was um i fitted like exactly where i was supposed to fit but there are things that i would not i would not overcome so i remember the second time the second time that i left home was this time um i don't worry i i mean i'm remembering because i had like i had like thought about them and i had yeah which is which has been a very good process for me as well so the second time was this time um i'm i'm four months pregnant then i come home i find stuff like school items um for his cousin but no first i come home and i find um school uniform and i'm like how comes you guys are bringing your cousin close to where we are staying and he was like i mean it's it's doable he can actually um he can he can what do you call it to take a train he can, he can commute yeah, he says no n- not not a problem he can commute from here to his place and i'm like okay then i come the, the following day i find one item the third day i come find another item another school item and i'm like hey what's going on here and he tells me no he's just bringing his items here his school items here because it's easier for him to go to school from here i mean it's easier for him to collect them uh together and put them here instead of carrying them all the way to his home and i'm like okay good then one time he comes to my office like this b- before the end of that week he comes to my office he just walks in and that walk i just that, that walk that uh that he had when he he wanted to say something he just walks in and he says hey i'm like hey it was as brief like i don't know like the same thing the same way the same way my end was like that brief again he comes and says hey um we've decided that my cousin is going to stay with us and i said y- you is you and who we is you and who and he says we have decided i said no tell me you we, we is who you and who and he said me and the mom and i'm like and where am i and he he like i he the same he just like says yeah we've decided and he walks out guess what i'm at work and you know me i'm a cry baby i'll just sit there and i will i will weep so many times so after that i went home and i tried to talk to him like explain to me tell me and he won't talk to me he will not 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 answer me so i i i i really i really had i had for a long time i felt cheated like i was close with the aunt i'm thinking why why didn't she tell me i'm thinking why aren't you telling me and you know i mean like i'm the woman of the house like this this your son is going to be dealing with me you know and he refuses and he, and 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 he refuses to talk to me completely so i decided to this is now the first time i'm talking to someone so i decided to go and talk to a pastor a past his colleague so i go talk to the pastor and i tell him so the pastor calls him and we have a discussion and then we talk about a lot of other things that have had been covered and um when you go home so i'm thinking like by the time we leave we leave the pastor's office you're going to resolve it with me fine we've spoken there you haven't you i mean i just need you to come and now tell me okay this is what is happening uh forgive me and let's talk about it because by the time we're leaving we're, it's like okay you i'm going to talk about yeah i'll i'll discuss with her we're going to talk about it so when you go home he doesn't say anything silent treatment he does not say anything then i ask like so now what 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 is going to happen after 
he tells me go and talk go and tell the pastor to tell me so from that time he starts telling me go and tell the pastor to tell me when i ask him something now he tells me go and talk, tell the pastor to tell me and that is how it was so the cousin moves in and um now i'm dealing i am i am barely 21 um yes newly married um pregnant i'm dealing with my hormones um dealing with a man a new man that i don't know of course like when you get into a, um, a marriage i mean that man that you knew is not a man that um that you get to find and i'm gonna explain this um there's this a time i was writing a book called marriage metamorphosis can i can i trademark that <laughs> it's okay so i was writing a book called marriage metamorphosis and i was uh, i was like comparing uh like the stages or um yeah the stages of marriage uh with a with a with a with a butterfly you know the way it starts from i'm not sure which one is poopa lava whichever whichever comes first like you cannot force something to be you, you can't force poopa to be lava until until it gets to that to that point this is the same way you cannot force uh, uh poopa to be a butterfly until it morphs to that and i love to give that example you know when you're watching um when when, when your when your boyfriend comes to see you um the focus is on you he won't watch news when he's coming to visit you he's gonna focus on you but when you get married he's morphed into that now now you're not the i mean you're, you're with him 24 hours you know so he's gonna give tv or our news um the attention that he wasn't giving it before so you start saying oh my spouse is changing my spouse is changing but really it's morphing you know so um yeah so i'm dealing with all this morphing and um i'm i'm everything is just confusing so i'm dealing with all these adjustments and it's hard you know i i learned that you can you can break your own family while you're trying to create your larger family or to empower your larger family and see my problem was not that the cousin has come my problem was how it was done yeah so adjusting was like like really really difficult so let me tell you one thing that i've learned and one thing that i hope someone is gonna take um do not make your spouse pay your debts unless you've discussed these debts and I've, unless you've agreed that you're gonna pay them together and by that i mean don't make your spouse pay your relative for the good that he he or she did you don't say oh he brought me up she raised me i have to raise their children unless you've agreed remember that auntie of yours or that uncle of yours or your grandfather your grandmother did not raise your spouse they raised you but they didn't raise your spouse so if you're gonna be paying some debt make sure you communicate and if you don't communicate i mean when that time comes because please i have helped i have helped my relatives like i have been there for my in-laws a hundred percent but the way the, the the way you do something is what matters so for that particular one it was done badly but for any any other time that i've come in it has been done like oh not in, no i mean yeah yeah some other times it's been done in agreement you know so just don't make someone pay for something that they didn't they didn't consume you are the consumer yo. you are the consumer don't, don't don't that's like you're bringing me baggage and you're you know and then when you do it you are you know thumping your chest i've got to do it i've got to do it you ruin your marriage you ruin your family you just like lay a foundation that is not good for your family so make sure because i know especially we africans we are not like we are community people we africans um we come from extended families and it's acceptable it's okay for me to be there for my cousin it's okay for me to be there for my it's okay for me to do all those things to even educate one two three twenty ten relatives but how you do it matters and not at the expense of your family not at the expense of your families some siblings will carry the entire family like you carry 
you carry the family at the expense of your own family so you you're creating you you're breaking your family as you're building the other family it doesn't even make sense it doesn't even make sense yeah so uh hmm, let me see the third the third time the third time uh the third time yeah so the third, the third time that i left so i'm not i'm just going to tell you the third time then i'm done because i realized that um all the times that i left i left because of lack of empathy like silent treatment not discussing like the same things that led my relationship all the way to the end all the way to the end so the third time i left um this time we, we were coming from um from cpd like um uh, what do you call it like town I, i don't know how to call it for any for everybody else to understand but you're coming from the city yeah here we say the city so you're coming from the city and um i we passed by where my mom used to work and every time i used to pass there i would feel some type of way and so this day i say oh my god i this is the last time uh the last time i, I saw my mom when she was okay i passed by her school i had come from school i went uh, we went for lunch and all that and so I'm, i'm giving um i'm giving my partner this story and um and i start crying and um and he he leaves my seat and he goes to sit at the back and i understand like i understand you have you don't i mean you don't know how to handle me when i'm crying you don't know how to um you don't know i mean you just don't know how to but these things happened from the beginning to the end like where is the learning where is the you know that's why i'm saying it's a pattern like where is the learning and the, for me i i felt like i i don't know for me i felt like any time i expressed like this is what hurt me instead of stopping i feel like it was being done more i f- i feel like it was it was being done more and um <laughs> so so yeah so that time when i went home i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't take it i i tried to explain this is how i felt i'm taking responsibility right i used to communicate with living until i couldn't live anymore i now started sucking it in you know and um i started taking it in um and I, by the time i have i have two children because i i remember there's a time i was pregnant my 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 son was five my daughter was two years and i was um five months pregnant and it was the same thing again it was the same thing it was the same thing the same i mean it was just around the same things i wouldn't say it was this time i just remember it was like silent treatment like you're asking some somebody something they will not talk to you they will not answer they will not i mean like it's it was like i don't know that thing used to make me feel but then now is when i've i've come to i did, I'm, i'm calling it silent treatment because now i know what it is let me let me let me read for you what silent treatment is i didn't know it was silent treatment i'll just say he's not talking to me i'm talking to him he's not talking to me um i we we we, we are discussing something i'm asking can we do this i'll tell you tomorrow i'll tell you i mean i'll tell you like there's no communication at all and so um I just learned uh, about silent treatment. I didn't know that it was something, you know. I just thought you're quiet. And it's 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 unfair. You know, it's unfair when you've done something wrong because it used to be when 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 he's done something wrong and that's why I keep saying, "Oh, probably I was too petty." So, I mean, like why are you asking me something petty? When you've done something wrong, you guys, and I don't know whether ladies do that. I I mean, I'm sure there are ladies who do that. Me, I cannot even keep quiet. Me, I cannot keep quiet, yo. You know, the people say i'm not going to talk to him for three days then okay now i'll keep quiet because now uh, things are different but then oh my god i ca- i could not even sleep like when you're not in i could i cannot sleep when you're we're not we're not in good terms so um to those people who give their spouses silent treatment let me tell you what this is so the silent treatment is a refusal to verbally communicate with someone often often as a means of punishment emotional manipulation or control although this type of behavior is more common in an intimate or um, romantic relationship it can also happen with family members friends or coworkers over time the use of the silent treatment can become emotionally abusive research has found that uh, people who receive the silent treatment experienced a threat to their needs of belonging 
self-esteem, control, and meaning, meaningful existence. So, I mean, it's a, it's a form of it's a form of abuse, emotional, psychological, and it it leaves the abused. Now that you, now that you've known, it's a, it's a form of abuse, and I know you don't know. You don't know it's a form of of abuse. You're just thinking, or you know, probably just decided I'm going I won't answer her. It's a form of abuse. It's a form of control, you know, and especially when you know someone. So it leaves the it, it leaves the abuser um, feeling worthless, you know, feeling worthless. And why 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 I, I now know it's a, it's really a form of abuse is because the more you're not talking to me, the more I want to talk to you. The more I I now start begging you. Oh, can we make up? Can now you I become you become the victim. If you if you had done something wrong, then you become the victim. Um, so. Yeah, so to people who use silent treat, si- so to people who use silent treatment, yo, please stop, stop doing that, stop doing that. And silent treatment is not being silent. These are two two different things. Or being quiet. Being quiet, you can decide. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk out. I need a break. You may communicate or not communicate. Go out, do what you need to do to like you know to to take a break then come back and say okay can we talk or i'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna talk today can we talk tomorrow or you're gonna talk when 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 i'm ready but this other one is someone is, is talking to you someone is asking you and you're just like you don't give you don't give answers you don't or you say okay yeah i'm sorry okay i don't even think that's yeah like you are like you like really with withhold and withdraw what you know your your partner your partner needs so yeah so for me it was um for me it was like that and i remember this time uh, i've just decided oh my god now i am done i am done i take all my documents and i go to the coast yeah i go to my aunt's place and i'm like now i am done i tell my boss i've quit i have i have my baby's uh like um because i'm pregnant so i have my baby's clinic card and i want to go and start my life like i this time i had decided so um so my partner came to Mombasa like so many times i don't even know how he how he would come like so many times you know and he would come and not talk he's just sit there and my aunt would be like look at how you're mistreating this guy can you go back home you know it's not fair for you to do that look at how many times he's come and then i'm boxed again and i go back again and when i go back i remember this time i went and we discussed oh when when we're angry when when something is wrong let's talk about it let's discuss about things don't do things by yourself i mean involve me in whatever you're doing let's talk up like so so we started like, like this routine oh my goodness i was so ambitious so we start this routine of let's talk about this at at like before we sleep let's check you know let's check in uh, how are you feeling has do you have anything that has angered you today and you do that for a few nights and then we go back to factory setting and i start again when i just remember one time i i left because uh, <laughs> i when i say leaving i mean i would not sleep at that house i would go to sleep at my friend's house you know like oh my days oh my gosh yeah and I, I i try to tell my friends like um don't do that i have to I have told so many of my friends like don't do that unless your life is in danger but for me that time i was feeling like my life i couldn't sleep i couldn't like i could not sleep and um can i excuse myself you know yeah i i had so many things going on and i, I just could i didn't know how to handle and i couldn't talk to anybody because i talk to you and then i'm told when i bring it up i'll be told go and talk to go and talk to so and so anyway so um so i mean so i left so many times but again i'm saying i left because of the same reasons then it got to a point like by maybe the, by the time i'm giving birth to my second child i mean i i couldn't i couldn't leave now with two children where are you going you know with two children now you have to you have to like settle in and now i'm settled in and now i've taken in i'm taking in everything um now um i think i've I've adjusted, I've conformed to this, to this life. I'm hurting. My body is now hurting. I'm, I'm starting to get all sorts of diseases uh, from my bones. I used to cry. I couldn't, like, I cannot go anywhere, but I am, I mean, I'm present there, but oh, we linked up with this couple. We didn't do it intentionally. It just happened. And so, um, we started talking about our issues. We'd meet, we'd meet up so many times, and we'd talk about our issues. So when there was someone else, he would, he he would talk. We would talk. So that made it very easy for me. So I don't know if it's a way that can work for you. I don't know. Like it, 
you should talk to you you should talk to your spouse but if you have to save to save it and that's where it is like get someone get a couple that you can be talking to like so so and and a couple that this person respects and um they will be able to talk and you you're gonna, you guys are going to be able to address your issues so i mean so we we uh we um we did that for a, for a, for a while and that was very helpful and then we we kind of we kind of settled you know it was it was now status quo i can handle this i mean fine you can talk to them but they're not going to change your emotions they're not going to change your empathy i mean i would talk to them even when i when i feel like oh he's not empathetic so um i've said this thing ended like i stopped i stopped going i settled i i mean now i was making my home and um taking in the pain the way it came not that i mean getting used to um to taking care of myself you'll take care of me you'll take me to hospital you but i mean like you you won't feel me you won't sit with me in my pain so i started to learn how to to do it for myself but then things change like changed again in 2017 2018 when money made its way to my home and that is when the, the nomadic life began again so this is so many years later i've settled um i'm crying yes i mean a lot of things are happening i'm still we're still the ideal couple but 2017 2018 life changed 